Rabbit Fur Stone Tutorial and Packaging Video Hi, I'm Nikki Kaminga from Keepsaker Supplies and Tree of Opals and as part of my series on working with hair and fur we'll be making this classic silver ring with rabbit fur. This video is dedicated to Thumper, now laid to rest and over the rainbow bridge. There are two different ways to order a ring like this. First you can order one from Tree of Opals and I'll make it for you or you can order supplies from my other business, Keepsaker Supplies and DIY. There's a link in the description or a link tree in my bio. How to make a rabbit fur ring. I sent this client a kit for her rabbit's fur and they posted it back to me by special delivery. We have some sending kit instruction downloads on keepsakersupplies.com. To make a rabbit fur stone, put a small amount of the fur on a piece of label backing paper. Don't use it all up, no matter how much the client sent you. That's very important in case you make a mistake. Today, I'm going to make four stones, each with different amounts of fur or sparkle mixes, then send the client a proof photo so she can choose her favorite. Add resin all along the fur, then use a cocktail stick to soak the fur in resin and remove air bubbles. I like to wait a little while with the fur to allow the air bubbles to rise, then gently push them out. Fur can be tricky to work with, so if you're new, practice with human hair a little first, then make some fur practice pieces before you work on an order. You can request a sample of fur to practice with when you order from keepsakersupplies.com by ordering a dried leaf and requesting fur, ashes or breast milk in the comments. Cut the fur to lengths a little longer than the mould so they can curve around. Using tweezers, carefully transfer the fur to the moulds. This bit needs a lot of patience, and the less you mess with the fur, the fewer air bubbles will be introduced. Check from the back, and you can see where any bubbles are hiding, and nudge them back out. Once you're happy with the fur placement, cure for 99 seconds on a low heat setting. I use the Sun 3 UV lamp. Once they're cured, add a little clay resin to the mould, so that the whole of the top layer is coated, but not too much or you won't have room to add colour. I don't recommend doing hair and fur pieces without colour because you'll see the base of the ring underneath it and dirt can get trapped under there. It doesn't look very nice. Next, put some clear resin on a piece of label backing paper and add the pigments you want. I've used a Gian Blue Resin Sparkle Mix and Pearly Blue Resin Sparkle Mix in various combinations here. Mix the pigment into the resin to create a paste. Add another very thin layer of clear resin to the mould and swirl in the tiniest bit of pigmented paste. Now cure again. Repeat using slightly more pigment in each layer until it's full. Don't use too much pigment or you'll find the layer won't cure properly. I also like to cure the offcuts of fur and return these to the client. I find that UV resin gives me more options when it comes to creating depth and artistic flair than epoxy resin. The amount of layers depends on the depth of the mould and the thickness of the layers, but at this point my mould was full. If you're enjoying this video, please consider subscribing to my channel or following me. After the final layer, add some top coat to the back of all the stones, cure and cool. Wait until the stones are completely cool, then remove them from the mould and give them a good check. Number the stones on the back and put them on something you can photograph for your client. Send your client a proof photo to see which one they prefer. I do edit the photos a little to get the best view of the stones so they're more true to life. Play around with the settings on your photo. I put the exact settings I used in the blog I've linked to in the description or on my link tree. I have a little message template stored in the notes on my phone which I can copy and paste into an email or social media message to the client adjusting a little for each order. Always let your clients know that the spare stones will be returned to them along with the leftover fur free of charge. My client chose stone number one so I put the rest of the stones in a small cellophane bag to return to her. Take their chosen stone and trim the edges with scissors, tin snips or side cutting pliers. Check it in the ring setting and if necessary use some coarse sandpaper to level out the back. If the stone is too tall, sand it down until it sits nicely. If it's too short, then build it up at the back with some UV resin. 
The stone was a little dull, so I added a layer of top coat. Once it's completely cured and cooled, cure it again and allow it to cool before setting it, or you can make the top coat dull. Next, put the ring in the ring clamp and add the first stone. You don't need glue. Use a curved burnisher to press down the edges at 12 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 3 o'clock, then 9 o'clock, then the corners, then smooth down any ridges. Give it a final polish with a silver polishing cloth and photograph. Don't forget, I've linked all the supplies I'm using in the video description, or there's a link in my bio, or you can just go to keepsakersupplies.com. Here's how I package my Tree of Opals orders. I add a piece of folded tissue paper to the box, then some shredded paper, also recycled. Then add the ring in the jewellery box, along with a silica gel sachet or a silver storage strip. Add their kit with the remaining fur and the spare stones. I like to include a couple of pieces of dried lavender because it makes the box smell beautiful. Then add a business card and a wish bracelet. Thank you to my friend's daughter for helping me make this batch. I always get so many lovely comments on the wish bracelets, including from this client. Let me know if you'd like a tutorial. An existing customer discount code for the next order and a branded jewellery polishing cloth. Finally, they get a printout of my care instructions. Also, I print out the invoice and write each client a little personalised note. Sometimes I add a certificate of authenticity if the client requests one. But in the case of this ring, it's very obvious from the beautiful grey colour of the rabbit's fur that I've used the first scent. Fold over the tissue paper and use a thank you sticker to seal. Then close the box, add eco-friendly packaging tape and a shipping label. I'm so grateful for my client's permission to film this as part of my advanced memorial jewellery course and for their trust in working with Thumper's Fur. And I look forward to showing you more fur tutorials soon. Now relax and do some crafting.